Okay, welcome to ETN News. We're looking at the earthquakes in Hawaii. Now they're still coming out around the shelf and maybe even out to this other volcano to the caldera. But you can see how the pattern is still going. Like I said, once we have earthquakes through here, you won't see them again because it's already broke loose. So we never know when it, the final slip is going to give on the slump. 2.5 is greater. We have 2.5 around Kilauea, 2.6, and a 2.8 around Pahala, and a 2.6. And this 2.5 is 1.0 miles deep. The rest of those are 19 and 20, where they're supposed to be coming from the chambers. So this would be the only one that's closest to the surface and the more concern. Okay, Alaska. Got four or five 2.5s and graders in here. But it looks like it's trying to back up. Like we were saying yesterday, looked like we was getting ready to have another large quake. See how many 2.5s? We got five of those, and the largest one is a 4.3 east southeast of a DAC, 42.0 miles deep. Now let's go down here and check this out. This is an explosion and southwest of Princeton, Canada. This is a copper mine is what's going on here. I don't know what's going on with the rest of these because they're just popping up. There's four explosions already down through here. And a couple of small quakes on each side of Medford. So let me see what we got going on down this way. Now this one here was a 3.5 east of Markleyville, California, 3.3 miles deep. Still got the pattern down toward Las Vegas, around Indian Springs, Beatty. And this here is calming down around Goldfield, so, you know, we got to watch that area. We could expect a larger quake. I mean, it's possible that we get a larger quake than what we had the first time. And look at this one out in the ocean. I see hot spots out here sometimes. Okay, Utah, I ain't got much going on. And Yellowstone, nothing. Okay, around Wyoming, we got a few. And around Texas, around the drilling points and things, we got a few. I know this is what Canada is reporting. 2.0, 1.2. This is coming down right toward the Cascadia, into the Cascadia. I mean, this is... Same thought down through it all joins together. 1.0 Pine Grove, Oregon. That was an explosion. And 1.1 Quebec. Now the 2.5 is greater. Over here on this side, 4.2 is greater on this side. Now look at New Zealand. New Zealand had a 5.2, Auckland Islands, New Zealand region, 18.8 .8 miles deep. Then we had a, another one at 5.0, east of North Island of New Zealand. You see these two quakes here, so we could most likely expect a quake right here in the middle somewhere, in between the two islands again, and it should be a 5 or higher. Now we got a 4.5. Northeast of Denman, Australia, 5.0 miles deep. They, uh, you know, I got subscribers telling me that there's a mines where they're mining over there uh, for coal. Well, we got coal mines here too, and we don't have earthquakes. You know, that's the only thing that would cause a jar is if, you know, like the shaft that goes down underground, uh, they fall in. The mining breaks, as they call them. 
at 4.5, that would be bigger than any mining break, you know, where the ground opens up. I lived on a property to where you could put a vehicle in one, you know, and people lost cows through the years in those mining breaks. Moved away from that area. I right, 5.0 Indonesia. Now down here, as we was talking yesterday, we we may need to start looking for a larger quake. Well, we had a 5.7 Chile, but I was expecting one on this side, 6.0 or greater. We was you know thinking that there may be one to hit. Now we we got this steel building, so it looks like it's going to hit. 6.0 or greater over here on this side next three to five days. It may hit this side of the plate. What it is Pacific this side is pushing on the Pacific plate. You can see the outline of the Pacific plate. And you know the plates have magma runs around them, the ring of fire. This one's pushing over here. It's the weakest spot we'll give first. But we always got to be prepared when we see a building because we don't know if it's going to hit our area or another area over here or an area in South America or up toward Japan. We don't know where it's going to hit. And after a few days, you can about tell that it's left the area off the Cascadia. But right here is where we see it build. And right here is where we're seeing it build right now. So if we don't get a quake over here on the Cascadia, it'll move on. It can junction off and cause larger activity across North America or it could come on down. And this plate here was the Cocos plate looked pretty rough here a little bit ago. And we haven't got any real big significant quakes out of that. Got some upper fives. But this is around Ramallah. It's a 5.1, 35.6 miles deep. Still showing activity. Still could get that large quake you know soon I know it will in the future I mean there's too much movement going on right here it has to do something alright now let's go look at the tremor map and it's energy from the earth on that you know in that spot first before I move move everything here I got another event in the United Kingdom Old Ham mass grave 300 bodies of babies and children was found there what are they doing digging them up you know once you find it's a cemetery you know it should be left at peace but they do what they want to do I guess and that's on the event map and on this on the anomalies this is the first of September this month you can see the anomaly here, and you can see part of it over here and there, going down into Florida. Now watch these move across the map. They're not fires, or all in North America would be burnt to crisp by now. We've been watching this for a few years now. It's getting worse every year, and hotter every year, more droughts every year, more storms every year. Bigger storms in places that we haven't had any, and more earthquakes. It's drying it out. I explained how it dries it out too. You know, uh, you know, like solar flares. What's causing, you know, like uh, solar panels and things that got thousands and thousands of acres. It don't hurt for just a few, but each solar panel puts off so much back toward the sun. It's just a little bit on each one. But if you got thousands of acres in each state covered with them in every country. You're reflecting the sun back to itself. It's going to cause solar flares, solar storms. And solar flares evaporate the moisture from the earth. Can't explain it no better. Okay. This here is on the second. Here's the third. Watch it go across now. Watch this line. Just follow it across. And you'll see what I'm talking about if you're new here. That's the second. Now we go to the third. Just keep on going. You can see it over here. And it, it just builds back up and starts over again and follows across again. That's the fourth. The fifth. And you won't see them where there's a storm. And the sixth. 
So it must be storming down this way because we're not seeing the end of it. But you can see all this coming through Texas, and I seen it earlier where, you know, storms is trying to develop down in that area. All right, it ain't showing anything for the seventh. And here's the storms that we have. And this one here on the east coast, it's it's going to be disappearing in a day or so. This one here will be disappearing in a day or so. But this one here around going over Guatemala is 50% chance in seven days. 50% chance of developing in the Gulf of Mexico. You got three over here. 15%. I mean, uh, low chance, low chance. And then you got this one. And there's one heading up this way that will disappear here in a couple days also. Now, this one over here, Hainan, went across it at 100, and I think it hit it at 150 mile per hour close to it. Then it went down to 130 as after it crossed the land because it slowed it down. Now it's going, it's supposed to come toward land and at 130 mile per hour, it should touch down at that speed or maybe a little higher because it's going to be in open waters. Then once it hits land, it'll go down to 120, and then on down to 75. All right, that's all in the storms. Now let's go look at the event map I was talking about. Yeah, if I uh, read something wrong, you know, different, just go with me because I've had that eye sur laser eye surgery on the left eye today. And then in a few days, I'll be going for to get ready for cataract surgery on the other eye. It's a mess. You've got to be able to see. I had cataract surgery on the left eye, and then it messed up. And then I had to have laser surgery today, this morning. And everything is bright like it's, uh, you know, you go outside, it looks like a big snow on because sun's out. Can't see nothing. It's a glare. But anyway, this here is tremors, epicenter, epicenters, and they call it energy. And they measured it like that. Like this one here is 1.0. And then you go on down 1.2, 1.6, 1 1.9. See magnitude energy. That's how much energy it's putting out. Now this is the eighth. I used to show this all the time, along with the vent map and a few other maps, a uh, heat map showing the heat temperatures in places. You know how hot it is. It's, it's best to keep up with that. It really, it's really important to some. But anyway, this is the 28th to the 29th. All right, let's go over to the 30th and look at the tremors that we're having down the west coast, all the way down to northern California, lower end of the Cascadia. And then we'll go over to the 31st. It's piled up and coming on over toward the Mendocino. See, when I used to check this before, this was not here like this. We have increased, significantly increased. All right, let's go to the 1st, September. Okay, there's the 1st. Here's the 2nd. You can see how they're piled up, backed up. Now, we're looking for a larger quake around the ring of fire, so don't forget that. It could always hit your area. It may not even lead to Cascadia, and if it don't lead to Cascadia, it would be a... Like, if we was looking for a 6.0 or greater to hit, and it didn't lead to Cascadia, that means it didn't lose magnitude. That means it's going to be way bigger than a 6.0 or greater, at least 7 plus. But I'm not saying a 7 plus is coming, I'm just saying that if it doesn't release and lose magnitude after so many miles, it loses a little bit after so many miles, then it would be the full magnitude. So it would be bigger than a 6.0 or greater. Okay, that's the 4th. Let's go to the 5th. 6th. 7th. 8th. 7th. Nothing. Oh, that's today. Alright, now let's go back to the 1st. 
and we'll look at this heat and here's the heat map on this you can see the heat spots and the hottest spot in the middle go to the second I mean no that's the third got really big on Vancouver Island that's a lot of heat and there's the fourth fifth sixth and like I said it didn't show the seventh all right we can see the heat and I'll see you all in the next updates everybody stay safe and we'll be watching